Hi, I'm Toru Tanzaba. Uh, thanks for coming. I'm going to have a um, uh, series tutorial presentation on charge pump circuits. Uh, please send me email to this address if you have any question. Uh, if you have any more interest on this topic, uh, please visit this uh, website. You may find uh, another interesting uh, things. What is a charge pump? Charge pump boosts voltages using diodes, capacitors, and clock. A charge pump input input voltage output a voltage which is higher than input voltage using diodes, capacitors, with clock. Almost 90 years ago, uh, the Cock Road and the Walton uh, creates, uh, created uh, uh, a facility to generate uh, about uh, 400,000 uh, volt uh, in 1 meter square times 10 meter height in size to uh, demonstrate the first artificial nuclear disintegration in history. Then, about 40 years later, uh, Dixon uh, shows, showed uh, new uh, types of uh, charge bomb uh, to integrate the, that circuit uh, to program a non-volatile memory, such as non-flash memory. Uh, from a 3 volt input, the charge bomb can generate 20 volt, which is applied to the gate of flash memory cell to program the data. With the 20 volt at the gate, the tunneling phenomenon occurs uh, between the floating gate and silicon substrate. The size is as small as uh, 10 to minus 8 of Cockroach Walton. Uh, since then, uh, the NAND brush uh, volume production started around the two, uh, 2000 year, and uh, after that, uh, the solid state drive, uh, which includes uh, NAND brush chips uh, to replace the hard disk drive, especially in uh, uh, mobile devices. Uh, if you uh, look at this slide, uh, I hope uh, you you can uh, guess uh, the how the uh, charge pump works. Uh, the capacitors are driven by a clock. Uh, so even number stages and odd number stages driven by a, a shifted uh, clock. And uh, below, uh, so grass and water uh, are figured as the capacitor and amount of charge stored in capacitor. The height of uh, the surface of the water uh, from uh, this baseline is considered uh, the potential voltage at the uh, top plate node of each capacitor. So now you have three capacitors and so you have three uh, glasses like this and also the the output terminal uh, is connected with uh, Large uh, the load capacitor. When the uh, clock uh, to the first capacitor grounded, then the first diodes turn on uh, until the this node uh, goes up to say VDD. After that, the 
bottom plate of the first capacitor goes up to VDD, then at the same time the bottom plate of the second capacitor is grounded. At this point, the uh, level of the water uh, of the first grass is higher than that of the second grass, therefore the uh, water can uh, flow from the first capacitor to the second capacitor, and so on. By doing that uh, the clock operation, uh, the injected charges from the uh, input terminal uh, go through the up through the capacitor like this. So uh, when you uh, look at the uh, charge pump, uh, then uh, you should uh, recall this uh, the animation, please. Uh, this slide shows the agenda for this uh, series tutorial. I'm start with the DC DC charge pump, then the DC DC charge pump. Uh, in the first portion, uh, I'm start with the uh, steady state circuit equation in low frequency operation. Then uh, I'm going to expand that model to dynamic behavior and its equivalent circuit model. The steady state circuit equation uh, is expanded into wider frequency range, uh, which should have uh, the low frequency operation model uh, at the extreme condition. And another aspect of the judge bump is power efficiency. And also I'm going to address uh, optimum designs. So optimization uh, is uh, various uh, kinds, such as minimizing the circuit area and uh, maximizing the, the power efficiency and so on. After that, I'm uh, going to focus on the SCDC charge pump, uh, which just uh, for the steady state circuit equation in wide frequency range. 